From Enrique having two different voice actors to Snoop Dogg playing a pimp on the show, today we're counting down 35 King of the Hill facts you probably didn't know. But first, guys, we have been stuck at 15,000 subscribers for over a year now, and we are officially about to break 16k, so if you guys would like to support the channel immensely, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so we can finally get past this wall and so you can get notified as these videos release. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Number 35. The restaurant Luli's featured in King of the Hill draws inspiration from the real-life establishment named Luli's. Number 34. Luan Platter's name actually pays homage to the Luan Platter served at Luli's restaurant in Houston, Texas. Number 33. The fictional town of Arlen, Texas, where King of the Hill is set, reflects the suburban landscape of creator Mike Judge's experience in Texas, with elements of the show drawn from various Texas locations including Garland. Number 32. Former Texas Governor Ann Richards made a guest appearance as herself in Season 5, Episode 11 titled Hank in the Great Glass Elevator, where she dates the character Bill Dotrieve. Number 31. The characters Min and Connie are both voiced by the talented Lauren Tom. Number 30. Upon embarking on writing for King of the Hill, one of the initial steps taken by Greg Daniels was to immerse himself in Texas culture alongside Mike Judge. Greg Daniels and Mike Judge took a trip to Texas visiting various neighborhoods, propane dealerships, and markets to capture the essence of the show's setting. Number 29. Surprisingly, Fox executives insisted on a more episodic format for King of the Hill, leading to a reduction in character development. This may explain some of the flanderization you see in later seasons, and why characters like Bill always seem to reset, even when they have found their own happiness. Number 28. Mike Judge voices the main character, Hank Hill, who bears a striking resemblance to the character Tom Anderson from Beavis and Butthead. Originally, the creators intended for Hank to be related to Tom, but this concept was shelved due to copyright issues. Number 27. Like many adult animated series, the production of each episode of King of the Hill is a time-consuming process, typically spanning nine months to make a single episode. Number 26. In a promotional stunt, Fox teased a potential move of King of the Hill from Arlen to Los Angeles. This sparked fan outcry and was later revealed to be a strategic move to promote the show's schedule change from Sunday night to Tuesday night. Number 25. Mike Judge's inspiration for Hank Hill's infatuation with propane stems from his observation of propane's prevalence during his time in Texas. Also, during this time, while Mike Judge was working on the pilot for King of the Hill, he came across a phone book advertising propane and propane accessories. Number 24. In King of the Hill, the school that Bobby, Connie, and Joseph attend is named Tom Landry Middle School. This school, of course, is named after the real-life Dallas Cowboys football coach, Tom Landry. And crazy enough, in real life, there is a school actually named after Tom Landry in Irving, Texas, but it's an elementary school. Number 23. The character Bill's full name is William Fontaine de la Tour d'Autrive. This name pays tribute to a King of the Hill writer who was named Jim Dotrieve. Number 22. During the casting process for the actors, the production team of King of the Hill utilized character cutouts rather than actors' physical appearances. The reason they did this was so that they would cast the characters based on how the voices sounded over the characters. Number 21. Enrique's character was voiced by two different actors during King of the Hill's run, with Aloy Casados voicing him initially for seasons 1 and 2, followed by Danny Trejo voicing him from season 3 onward. Number 20. John Redcorn, much like Enrique, underwent a transition between two different voice actors throughout the series, but under vastly different circumstances. In the first season, John Redcorn was voiced by Victor Aaron, a Native American actor from the Yakari tribe. Tragically, Victor Aaron passed away in 1966 due to a road accident, leaving a notable impact on his loved ones and on the show. The episode, The Order of the Straight Arrow, stands out as the episode is dedicated to Victor Aaron's memory. Following Victor Aaron's passing, John Redcorn was portrayed by Jonathan Joss. Joss, a member of the Native American band, Ray Corn Band, seamlessly stepped into the role with this change perhaps explaining John Redcorn's newfound proficiency with the electric guitar later in the series. Number 19. Boomhauer's distinctive voice was inspired by a message left on Mike Judge's answering machine. Also, the voice for Boomhauer is provided by Mike Judge himself. Number 18. In Season 3, Episode 10 of King of the Hill titled, 
a firefighting we will go, we gain insight into the world through Boomhauer's perspective. In a flashback scene depicting the events leading up to a fire, Boomhauer's recollection reveals that in his mind he communicates clearly with everyone, while those around him speak in his distinctive gibberish. For God's sakes, Hank, act like an adult, man. And keep it down, guys, will you? I am trying to get through an article on vintage Camaros, and I've been on the same dang page for 20 minutes. Number 17. Peggy's mother, named Maddie Platter, underwent three distinct character designs throughout the series. Initially introduced in Season 1, Episode 2, titled Square Peg, her design appeared to resemble an older version of Peggy. Notably, in this episode, Maddie gives Peggy a book that is supposed to explain the changes her body will be going through. This design persisted into the earlier stages of Peggy's life. However, in Season 2, Episode 14, titled I Remember Mono, Peggy's mother appeared noticeably older. This older design remained consistent throughout her cameo appearances, like in the Thanksgiving special, Happy Thanksgiving. However, her appearance saw its final evolution in Season 9, Episode 1, where she appeared significantly younger than she did in previous seasons. If Maddie Platter returns in the King of the Hill revival, it's likely that she's going to be depicted as aged up, but I think it would be a really cool easter egg if she comes back to have her resemble her initial appearance. Number 16. In Season 6, Episode 9, titled The Blue Grass is Always Greener, there's a surprising moment where Boomhauer sings in a clear voice, undoubtedly catching viewers off guard. Blue moon up, you can suck it, keep on shining. But we'll shine on the one that's gonna prove untrue. Blue moon up, you can suck it, keep on shining. Or shine on the one that's gonna let me blue. Surprisingly, while Boomhauer's speaking voice is iconic, it's actually provided by country singer Vince Gill. Number 15. The character Chuck Mangione in King of the Hill is voiced by the real life musician of the same name, Chuck Mangione. And just like in King of the Hill, Chuck Mangione in real life is renowned for his jazz performances. Number 14. Dusty Hill, the bass guitarist for ZZ Top, portrays himself as Hank's cousin in King of the Hill. Number 13. The memorable side character Lucky, who eventually becomes the husband of Luann Platter, is voiced by none other than the famous Tom Petty. Number 12. The famous rapper Snoop Dogg makes a guest appearance as Alabaster in Season 5, Episode 3, titled, Ho oh Yeah. Yo, what you want for that Jasper brunette? <gasps> that is my wife. Man, that's the biggest mistake a pimp could make. <laughs> Marrying one of his hoes. Number 11. In Season 11, Episode 17 of Family Guy, Hank Hill made a cameo in the cold opening. This cameo actually gives us a little bit of an idea of what King of the Hill will look like in widescreen. Number 10. Daniel Stern, who is best known for his roles in the Home Alone movies, auditioned for the role of Dale Gribble, but ultimately the role went to Johnny Hardwick, who undeniably made the character iconic. Not only did Hardwick bring Dale to life, he also served as staff writer, story editor, and producer of King of the Hill, making his passing an even greater loss for the upcoming revival of the series. Number 9. Speaking of the King of the Hill revival, Johnny Hardwick recorded a few episodes before his unfortunate passing. However, there hasn't been any official information on whether his audio tracks will be used in the upcoming revival or if the lines will be redubbed altogether. Based on how King of the Hill has handled actors' deaths in the past, it is possible that the revival will use Hardwick's original lines, possibly with a tribute card honoring him in his final episode. We could then see another actor take up the role, however, this is speculation as we haven't even gotten a trailer for the revival yet. Number 8. The theme song of King of the Hill titled Yahoos and Triangles by The Refreshments was chosen from hundreds of submissions. Number 7. TV Guide recognizes Bobby Hill as the 48th greatest cartoon character of all time. Number 6. In various scenes of King of the Hill, a Bart Simpson doll can be spotted on Bobby's shelves. Number 5. As King of the Hill progressed, Greg Daniels and Mike Judge had reduced involvement starting with Season 7. Once Season 7 rolled around, John Oshler and Dave Krinsky who had worked on the show since Season 3 took over completely, assuming greater control and refocusing the show back into political humor. Number 4. 
King of the Hill was on the brink of cancellation after season 10, but it received a renewal after the show had already concluded production. This unexpected return allowed the series to continue for three more seasons, ultimately granting it respectable 13 season run. Number 3. Hank, Bobby, Peggy, Luann, Dale, and Boomhauer make a cameo in The Simpsons during the episode Bart Starr. <laughs> We drove 2,000 miles for this. Number 2. Originally, the episode Lucky's Wedding Suit was intended to serve as the series finale of King of the Hill. The original ending, which was already animated, revealed that some of the events of the series were dreams, and that the entire show took place over the course of a year. Remember that time I stole the tank from the army base? That never happened. And I wasn't born in a bathroom at Yankee Stadium while Cotton tried to kill Castro with a blow dart. Really? Bill, those were all vivid dreams you had after you ate at that revolving Hungarian restaurant in McMainerberry. The original ending concluded with a shot of an overview of Arlen that would later be seen in the true series finale in season 13. Number 1. King of the Hill has been nominated for multiple awards 53 times and they won 11 of those, with two of them being Emmy Awards. One of those Emmys was for Outstanding Voice Acting Work and Performance in 2002, and the other was for Animated Outstanding Programming in 1999. Well guys, that does it. I want to say this video was actually really fun to make. One of the reasons why I like doing these facts videos is because it gets me more familiar with shows that I plan to talk about more in the future. And obviously from some of the things I mentioned, if you can't already tell, I'm really excited for the King of the Hill revival. I'm just hoping that it ends up being a weekly release so that we can review it as it comes out, kind of like I've been doing with Family Guy. But once again, guys, we have been stuck at 15,000 subscribers for over a year now. And we're finally about to break 16k, so if you would like to support the channel immensely, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you can be notified as these videos release. Alrighty guys, you all take care, have a good one.